The Stoics, an ancient school of philosophy, believed that true strength lies not in conquering external forces, but in mastering our own emotions. In today's world, this wisdom is more relevant than ever. Have you ever felt drained by negativity after interacting with someone? Toxic people can disrupt our mental well-being, leaving us feeling frustrated and powerless. But what if there were practical strategies to navigate these difficult dynamics? We'll go over 13 practical Stoic-inspired ideas in this video that will give you the ability to handle toxic people with compassion, grace, and even resilience. Join me on a journey to protect your emotional well-being and subscribe to the channel for more tips on developing mental resilience. By the end of this video, you'll be equipped with a toolbox of stoic wisdom to handle toxic people effectively. So, take a deep breath and let's begin. Number 1. Identifying and understanding the toxic threat. Take a moment to picture yourself serving as a guard at the entrance to your very own personal citadel. Your inner tranquility, your physical health, and your emotional safety are all represented by this citadel. Without a doubt, awareness is the first line of defense in the process of protecting this fortress as well. In the same way that a watchful guard has to be able to notice potential dangers, you need to be able to recognize the indicators that a poisonous individual is approaching you. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher who was a proponent of reason and self-control, tells us in his Enchiridion that it is not what happens to you that upsets you. More importantly, it is your judgment of what happens. It is especially important to keep this piece of advice in mind while dealing with poisonous people. It is not the case that their negative attitudes and manipulative acts have the ability to exert force over you. Your emotional reaction to these activities and how you perceive them are the factors that determine the effect that they have on your sense of inner peace at any given moment. How to cultivate a Stoic's gaze, that is a calm and objective method of viewing the situation, is the key to success. Learning to recognize the characteristics of poisonous conduct is a necessary step in this process. Listed below are some important warning signs. Constant criticism. A toxic individual may find nothing but fault with you, your conduct, or the decisions you make on a consistent basis. Although this criticism may be indirect or overt, it will always leave you feeling deflated and uncertain about your abilities. Toxic people frequently resort to deceptive strategies in order to achieve the goals they have set for themselves. In an effort to exert control over your conduct, they may resort to flattery, guilt trips, or even threats. A toxic person appears to thrive on negativity. Negativity is a toxic person. They are continuously whining and pulling others down with their pessimism so that they can focus on the worst aspects of the problems they are concerned with. Additionally, in addition to these general indications, there are also several types of toxic personalities that you should be aware of. The narcissist is a person who is constantly looking for approval and adoration throughout their life. It is possible that they are charming at first, but in the end, their interactions are one-sided, leaving you feeling emotionally exhausted. This individual lives on social turmoil, according to the gossip. They are known to propagate rumors, stir up trouble, and take pleasure in causing friction between other people. Known as the energy vampire, this individual has the ability to drain your vitality as the term says, interactions with them leave you feeling cognitively and emotionally drained and fatigued emotionally. The development of a mental map of the potential dangers that could befall your inner citadel 
can be accomplished by first gaining an awareness of the many toxic personalities and the actions that they display. In the same way that a Roman Stoic philosopher like Seneca might devise a plan to combat an adversary on the battlefield, you may make use of your newly acquired awareness to anticipate the strategies employed by potentially harmful individuals and devise a strategy to safeguard your emotional well-being. Number 2. Fortify your walls. Put yourself in the shoes of Marcus Aurelius, the famous Stoic Emperor of Rome. In order to rule a wide empire, one needed to possess power, knowledge, and unyielding determination. When it comes to strengthening the walls of your own inner citadel, often known as your emotional well-being, these same attributes are vital. Undoubtedly, the boundaries that you have established are the foundation of this citadel. When dealing with toxic people, boundaries are the obvious lines that you create in the sand to demarcate your boundaries. They determine the kinds of conduct that you will and will not approve of. You should not permit poisonous people to intrude on your emotional territory in the same way that a powerful monarch would not permit his boundaries to be violated. What comes into play here is the Stoic philosophy, which emphasizes the importance of reason and self-control. In order to take the initial step, you must first determine which activities deplete your energy or violate your sense of who you are. Is it the persistent pessimism shared by a friend? When a co-worker engages in manipulative behavior, the intrusive counsel of a member of the family, make sure that you are open and honest with yourself about the things that you will not bear. The next step, when you have determined these boundaries, is to communicate them in a clear and concise manner. Tap into your inner Marcus Aurelius and be firm while still being fair. To facilitate effective communication, the following are some strategies. Think on how you are feeling and use I statements. Rather than making accusing words such as, you are always so negative, you could try saying something like, I feel drained when you constantly focus on the unpleasant things. Be as specific as possible. Take care not to leave any chance for misunderstanding. Rather than saying something like, I need some space, you should say something like, I can't talk right now, but I'd be happy to chat later this week. Keep your word, but be kind. At the same time, there is a distinction between being assertive and being aggressive. It is important to convey your point with self-assurance while avoiding animosity. On the other hand, establishing boundaries is not a one-time experience. When it comes to enforcing your boundaries, you need to be hard and consistent, just like a stoic ruler who is always on guard against barbarian invasions. A wall that is unstable is simple to dismantle. In the event that a toxic individual disregards your limits, you should remind them in a calm manner of the line that has been established. It may even be necessary for you to restrict your interaction with the person or completely withdraw from the situation. Keep in mind that establishing limits is not about punishing someone. Rather, it is about protecting yourself. Envy, a vice that frequently serves as a source of poisonous talk, was vigorously avoided by the Stoics. Through the establishment of boundaries, you are not engaging in selfish behavior. Rather, you are merely safeguarding your emotional well-being and establishing the space that is necessary for you to build inner peace. Within the context of your Stoic path toward a life of peace, a strong citadel that is characterized by boundaries that are clearly defined and well defended is an essential component. Number 3. Become uninteresting to the emotional barbarian. Take into consideration a ferocious emotional barbarian who is driven by pessimism and is looking for a dramatic conflict. There are certain poisonous persons who act in this manner. They rely on attention, on your emotional response, and their negativity thrives on that. 
in the hopes of eliciting a response, a glimmer of fury or hurt that will fuel their fire, they constantly poke and poke with insults. The stoic ideals of emotional regulation and indifference to external stimuli served as the inspiration for the Grey Rock Method, which comes into its own as a strong instrument in this context. Paul Friedman, a therapist, created a technique known as the Grey Rock Method. It is a strategy that involves being emotionally less receptive. It is not about fully shutting down. Rather, it is about providing the emotional equivalent of a smooth grey rock, a surface that is neutral and unyielding, and which does not provide any handholds for the negative to cling to. In order to further dissect this approach, let us draw upon the sage advice of Seneca, a great Roman Stoic philosopher. Seneca tells us that true happiness resides in enjoying the present without anxious dependence upon the future. This is a reminder that we should starve ourselves of the need for attention. People who are toxic most of the time seek attention, whether it be positive or negative. With the grey rock method, you are preventing them from experiencing the emotional response that they are looking for. In the midst of the storm that they are attempting to generate, you become uninteresting and just like a dull rock. Responses that are neutral serve as your armor. The grey rock method entails reacting to negative statements with statements that are neutral and true on purpose. It is important to refrain from becoming involved in emotional disputes or justifications. If you have a friend that is toxic and they insult your work, you can deflect their assault by saying, that's interesting, without giving them any more fuel to feed their negativity. Toxic people frequently attempt to control your emotions. Thus, it is important to avoid getting sucked into the emotional vortex. They could resort to sarcasm, guilt trips, or even plain hostility in their behavior. In this situation, the most important thing is to disengage from their emotional vortex. Maintain your composure and respond in a factual manner, refusing to become involved in their drama. It is important to keep in mind that Seneca teaches that the path to genuine happiness is to not amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears. You should not give them the emotional power that they are seeking. The Grey Rock Method is a potent instrument, but it is not a substitute for a miracle cure. It's possible that some toxic personalities will initially escalate their conduct, putting your emotional rock to the test. Keep your cool, be consistent, and keep in mind that you are not to blame for the negativity that they are displaying. You can turn yourself from a passive victim of their emotional theatrics into an unmoved spectator by applying this method that is influenced by Stoicism. This will defend your inner calm and emotional well-being. Number 4. The Broken Record Technique Imagine being subjected to a never-ending onslaught of manipulation, a toxic individual chipping away at your boundaries through deceptive arguments and emotional ploys. Being subjected to such a persistent onslaught can be both emotionally tiring and unpleasant. Don't be afraid, however. The stoic principles of unshakable reason and perseverance serve as the inspiration for the broken record technique, which emerges as a potent defense when used. The broken record technique is a strategy that was developed to combat deceptive tactics. It entails patiently repeating a clear declaration about your position, similar to how a broken record skips on the same unshakable message. This method, which appears to be quite straightforward, has the potential to be remarkably powerful in repelling attempts to derail you and maintaining a firm focus on your requirements. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus is a cornerstone of Stoic philosophy. Therefore, let us explore deeper into this technique by drawing upon his wisdom. The phrase, freedom is the only good to describe the power of perseverance. 
This freedom encompasses the ability to determine your own boundaries as well as the liberty to say no without providing an explanation. This essential principle is exemplified by the broken record technique. You are able to display your steadfast resolution and prevent the manipulator from pulling you off course by reiterating your viewpoint in a calm and relentless manner. Defending against emotional attacks. For the purpose of gaining the upper hand, manipulators frequently deploy emotional strategies. They could try to manipulate you by using flattery, guilt trips, or even fury in an effort to get you to do what they want. You are able to avoid these emotional assaults with the assistance of the broken record technique. You are able to deflect their attempts to manipulate your emotions and keep the argument based in reason by concentrating on the factual statement of your stance. The consistent repetition of your position can be very disconcerting to a manipulator. This is because repetition is considered to be a form of defense. The flow of their conversation is disrupted, they are thrown off balance, and the hollowness of their arguments is brought to light. Imagine a wave crashing on a rock that is very strong. The rock does not move at all, while the wave ultimately disappears. Contrary to popular belief, the broken record technique does not involve confrontation. Maintaining a firm focus on your stance while enforcing your boundaries in a calm manner is something that is important. Keep in mind that Stoicism places a strong emphasis on reason and logic as the guiding principles for managing the problems that life presents. Through the utilization of this method, you give yourself the ability to resist exploitation and safeguard your inner peace with unyielding determination. Number five, don't take the bait. Imagine a skilled angler who is casting a line that is baited with negative thoughts in the hopes of catching you in a whirlpool of all kinds of emotional drama. They dangle provocations, insults or guilt trips in the hopes of eliciting a reaction that will fuel their drama and feed their negativity. This is the strategy that many toxic people do. However, the Stoic philosophy provides a great defense, which is indifference. This is not the same thing as apathy. Rather, it refers to the state of being emotionally detached from something. The Stoics, especially particularly philosophers such as Epictetus, made a distinction between apathy and indifference. In their opinion, apathy was a state that characterized a lack of concern and a state of listlessness. The concept of indifference, on the other hand, refers to a disconnection from the unpleasant feelings and judgments that distort our own reason. When it comes to dealing with toxic people, this distinction is really important. The following is an explanation of how stoic indifference can assist you in avoiding going for the drama bait. Be aware of the strategy. The first stage is to be aware of the strategy. Become familiar with the telltale signals that a toxic individual is attempting to lure you in. What exactly is it? Is it a caustic remark, a veiled insult, or a guilt trip that is camouflaged as a proposal? By the time you have identified the strategy, you have, to a certain extent, rendered it ineffective. The bait is intended to elicit a response, such as wrath, annoyance, or defensiveness and it is important to detach yourself from the emotional hook. Stoic indifference, on the other hand, is a choice that allows you to avoid becoming emotionally tied to the negative aspects of the situation. Consider the scenario in which you are unable to take the bait that is hanging in the water. You examine it with cool composure, unaffected by the power it possesses to anger you. Let the drama dissolve. When you don't respond to their negative comments, the power that they have over you is diminished. Due to a shortage of fuel, the drama that they are attempting to build is unable to last. In the absence of a response, 
their scathing remarks remain suspended in the air, eventually losing their power. It is not necessary to transform into a heartless and uncaring machine. The practice of Stoicism promotes the expression of good emotions. On the other hand, it places an emphasis on detaching from negative emotions that you are unable to control and channeling your feelings toward things that you can control. You can turn yourself from a passive player in their drama into a peaceful observer by practicing stoic indifference. This allows you to demonstrate that you are not willing to become involved in their emotional web. It is your own inner serenity that continues to exist, a refuge that is unaffected by the storms that others attempt to generate. Number six, the art of the non-reaction. Imagine somebody who is a verbal gladiator, someone who is a master of insults and barbs and who thrives on the heated back and forth of an argument. There are some poisonous folks who call this domain their home. They use words as weapons with the intention of inciting anger, humiliating you and ultimately luring you into their emotional sphere. Presented here is a stoic strategy that is not only effective, but also frequently underappreciated, the art of the non-reaction. When deployed in a planned manner, silence has the potential to be an effective weapon against the lethal verbal assault. By causing a disruption in the dynamic that they want, it disarms them. Astonishing quiet, on the other hand, is not something that comes effortlessly to everyone. The desire to answer, to defend ourselves, or to win the argument is something that we are frequently conditioned to feel for ourselves. Stoicism, on the other hand, teaches us the significance of mastering our reactions, and a stillness maintained at the appropriate moment indicates true control. In order to have a clearer understanding of the strength of the non-reaction, let us consider the writings of Marcus Aurelius, the well-known Roman Stoic emperor. Putting a stop to the toxic dance, people who are toxic frequently rely on a pattern that is predictable. Their tone is pessimistic and they anticipate a response from you. When you show anger, annoyance or defensiveness toward them, you are adding fuel to their fire and maintaining the toxic dance. Having no reaction causes this pattern to be disrupted. You are denying them the emotional response that they are looking for by choosing silence. Just for a moment, picture a tennis player swinging their racket toward a court that is completely empty. Their tremendous serve falls with a thud, and everything that follows is complete silence. In this perspective, silence is not empty. It is a form of communication that conveys meaning without words. This demonstrates that you have a high level of self-control and that you are unwilling to partake in their negative behavior. The message that it sends is one of strength and non-attachment to the emotional manipulation that they are engaging in. It is important to remember that Marcus Aurelius advised us to waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Become one. The attributes of a good Stoic are exemplified by your quiet. You are calm, reasonable and unmoved by the provocations that come from the outside world. Prepare yourself for the escalation. When using the non-reaction, it is essential to apply a planned approach wherever possible. In the beginning, a toxic person may increase their efforts by hurling further verbal insults in an effort to elicit a response from the other person. Keep your composure and remain unmoved in your quiet. It is important to keep in mind that quiet is not a sign of weakness. Rather, it is a powerful instrument that is utilized by those who are truly strong. The non-reaction is not a solution that can be applied in every situation, but it is an important weapon in your stoic armory. It has the potential to disarm poisonous people, defend your inner peace, 
and demonstrate that you have power over your own emotions when it is utilized strategically. When you choose quiet, you are making a powerful message in and of itself because you are choosing not to play their game. Number 7. Limit your exposure. Imagine that you are inside your walled citadel where your mental health is being painstakingly preserved by strict boundaries during the entire process. However, even the most sturdy walls are not able to totally protect you from dangers that come from the outside. Contaminated individuals, just like persistent intruders, may nevertheless make an effort to penetrate your safeguards. The stoic idea of controlling what you can control comes into play at this point in the discussion for you. Although you are unable to control the actions of toxic people, you are able to manage the amount of time you spend with them. One of the first lines of defense in this method is to reduce the amount of time you spend interacting with people who are toxic. When it is possible, establish a physical distance. Would you be able to completely avoid them? It is possible for you to reschedule a lunch engagement or to respectfully remove yourself from something that is being discussed. Keep in mind that this is not about being impolite. Rather, it is about protecting oneself in the same way that a stoic leader would not send his forces into a conflict that was not essential. You should not subject yourself to negativity that is simply not necessary. Nevertheless, it is not always feasible to avoid something completely. On occasion, toxic people may be people who work with you, members of your family, or even close friends and acquaintances. In these kinds of circumstances, establishing emotional distance becomes absolutely necessary. This can be accomplished by the following strategies. Epictetus, a notable Stoic philosopher, tells us that happiness and freedom begin with a clear understanding of one another. This is a quote by Epictetus which highlights the importance of mental detachment. Nevertheless, this does not imply that there is emotional involvement you are able to comprehend the pessimism of another individual without allowing it to color your attitude. Exercise mental detachment by observing their conduct in an impartial manner without allowing yourself to become emotionally invested in it. Cognitive reframing. Persons that are toxic to you will frequently attempt to control your feelings by using negativity. Cognitive reframing a method that is greatly influenced by stoic concepts can be of great assistance in this situation. Transform their pessimism into an objective observation by reframing it. In the event that a co-worker is continually complaining, for instance, you may reframe the situation as they appear to be having a difficult day rather than allowing their negativity to bring you down. Toxic people thrive on negativity. Thus, it is important to focus on the positive. Try not to give them the ability to take away your happiness. Make a concerted effort to concentrate on the positive aspects of your life, such as the personal interests you enjoy, the significant work you do, and the supporting friends you have. Allow yourself to be emotionally protected by these beneficial factors, a safe haven from the negative that they bring, there is no such thing as cowardice when it comes to limiting your exposure, both physically and emotionally. Protecting your inner peace and practicing self-care are both important. Stoics have a strong belief in the importance of leading a moral life and acting rationally. When you reduce the amount of time you spend interacting with negative people and situations, you make room for yourself to nurture a good and flourishing inner life. Imagine that your fortress is encircled by a large moat, which, in addition to being a physical barrier, also serves as an emotional barrier, protecting your peace from the advancing negativity of poisonous people. Number 8. Build your support system. Just for a moment, 
picture yourself serving as a guard at the entrance to your inner castle. Your walls have been strengthened with boundaries, you have perfected the art of non-reaction, and you have reduced the number of toxic people you are present with. However, in order to fully defend their position, even the most courageous warrior requires a powerful phalanx, which is a formation of trustworthy allies. Your support system is your stoic phalanx, which is an essential component in ensuring that you maintain your inner serenity when you are engaged in the fight against negativity. The Stoics, especially notably philosophers such as Seneca, placed a strong emphasis on the significance of living a life that is in harmony with nature. These guiding principles are exemplified by a network of virtuous individuals who are supportive of you, who inspire you, and who share your fundamental beliefs. In difficult times, you may turn to them for support and guidance. They are the people who will listen to you, offer wise counsel, and offer unwavering encouragement. One way in which a robust support system might serve as a buffer against the negative influence of toxic individuals is as follows. In the process of dealing with toxic people, it can be emotionally draining to have a safe space for sharing. It is possible to create a secure environment in which to analyze your experiences and express your frustrations when you have trusted friends or family members to whom you can confide. Their comprehension and compassion can serve as a vital support system, serving as a reminder that you are not fighting this struggle alone. Toxic people frequently take away from your sense of self-worth, but they may also be a source of encouragement. An effective support system serves as a counterforce, providing you with encouragement and reminding you of your abilities and the value you bring to the world. Their faith in you has the power to strengthen your determination and rekindle the fire that burns inside you, particularly in situations where negativity threatens to extinguish it. Setting an example of virtue and positivity. The Stoics held the belief that it is important to surround oneself with persons who exemplify the characteristics that one wishes to cultivate. A network of virtuous individuals who are supportive of one another might serve as a positive role model. It is possible to learn and develop by seeing the strength, resilience and optimistic outlook that they possess. This will help you increase your own capacity to gracefully manage negative situations. The process of constructing a solid network of support is one that never ends. In order to accomplish this, you will need to cultivate relationships that already exist and look for people who match your beliefs. In order to cultivate this beautiful phalanx, here are some ways to do so. Invest in quality time. Set aside time to have meaningful interactions with the people who are responsible for your support. You may build a sense of connection by sharing your experiences, listening to theirs and sharing your own. Joining clubs, volunteer organizations or online communities that are congruent with your interests and values is a great way to bring together people who share your values and interests. This place is filled with people who share your values and who can serve as a natural source of support and encouragement. It is important to remember that the power of showing gratitude to those who are supporting you can never be underestimated. Please express your gratitude to them for the great influence they have on your well-being as well as for their presence in your life and their unflinching support. Through the cultivation of a robust stoic phalanx, you may establish a formidable shield that protects you from the negativity that is caused by poisonous people. Strength, perspective and a revitalized sense of optimism are all things that you acquire when you are surrounded by positive influences. Always keep in mind that even the most well-guarded fortress might benefit from a robust defense from the outside. 
Your support system, which consists of your trusty companions, transforms into your unyielding phalanx, guaranteeing that your inner serenity continues to possess a secure and protected sanctuary. Number 9. Prioritize self-care. Making contact with toxic individuals is analogous to being confronted with an unrelenting assault in combat. The emotional energy that you have is depleted and you may end up feeling exhausted as a result. When it comes to protecting yourself against negativity, self-care becomes an essential component, much as a stoic warrior would make it a priority to tend to their wounds and sharpen their blade after a battle. Your stoic style of living should include self-care as a fundamental component. Include it in your daily routine and think of it as an investment in your mental well-being. Make it a priority alongside other vital chores and schedule it into your schedule. Your emotional reserves can be replenished and your resistance to negativity can be strengthened through the following approaches of self-care. Participate in activities that bring you joy. Determine the activities that bring you actual delight and can help you relax. Exercises that are physical in nature, such as running or yoga, as well as artistic activities, such as painting or writing, could fall under this category. You are able to de-stress, recharge your emotional batteries, and return to the world with newfound energy and perspective when you participate in these activities and immerse yourself in them. The Stoics engaged in awareness practices that were analogous to meditation. These practices were also known as meditation. Through the practice of meditation, you are able to calm your mind, disengage from negative thoughts, and create inner peace. When you make meditation a regular part of your self-care regimen, you give yourself a great tool to manage stress and negativity, whether it comes from yourself or from other people who are poisonous to you. Seek solace in nature. The Stoics placed a strong emphasis on living in agreement with the natural world. The act of spending time in natural settings, whether it be a walk in a park or a hike through the woods, has a significant influence on our overall health and happiness. If you want to alleviate stress, enhance your mood and gain a sense of perspective that can help you fight the negativity that you experience from toxic people, then you should try to immerse yourself in the natural world. As a type of preventative maintenance for your emotional well-being, you might think of self-care as practicing self-care. A person who is well rested and centered is in a far better position to deal with negative emotions. In the same way that a stoic warrior would make sure their armor was sturdy and their sword was sharp, you may nurture your emotional resilience by engaging in self-care techniques. Listen to the signals your body sends you. Continuous communication is taking on between you and your body. Observe the symptoms of exhaustion, tension or emotional depletion and pay attention to them. To make self-care a priority, you shouldn't wait until you are utterly exhausted before doing so. Incorporate healthy eating, make sure you get enough sleep and take breaks throughout the day. The basis for your emotional resilience is laid by these routines, which may appear to be straightforward. In the same way that you established boundaries with people who are poisonous to you, you should also establish boundaries around the time you spend on self-care. Respectfully denying requests that might interfere with your time to relax or setting aside certain times throughout the day to engage in activities that promote self-care are examples of ways to accomplish this. Always keep in mind that putting your own well-being first is not an act of selfishness. Rather, it is necessary for preserving your emotional resilience. You can become a more powerful and well-balanced individual by implementing self-care into your stoic way of life. A stoic warrior would be prepared to meet any adversary, 
and you approach obstacles with a better perspective and emotional fortitude, much like a stoic warrior would. It is important to keep in mind that having a full emotional battery enables you to more effectively deflect negativity and radiate positivity, so establishing a formidable shield against the toxic people in your circle of existence. Number 10. Remember, it's not about you. Picture yourself with a dark cloud looming over you, spewing out negativity and obscuring your view of the outside world. When you're working with toxic people, you will frequently encounter situations like this. They create a poisonous environment by projecting their own worries, insecurities and issues onto those around them, which results in people being affected negatively. The concept of prosopopoeia, which is rooted in Stoic philosophy, serves as a formidable defense mechanism in this context. We are encouraged to view ourselves as intelligent observers who are standing outside of the emotional tornado through the usage of the phrase prosopopoeia, which is utilized by Stoic philosophers. We become impartial analyzers of the issue, separating ourselves from the negative aspects of the scenario and concentrating on the rational aspects. When interacting with toxic people, it is essential to maintain this level of detachment because the insults and negativity they express are rarely directed at the individual. Rather, they are reflections of the individual's own inner issues. You can navigate the toxicity of toxic people by utilizing stoic detachment in the following ways. In order to divert attention away from their own inadequacies, toxic people frequently resort to blaming others, criticizing others, and being negative. You are able to discern this projection for what it is by applying the prosopopeia vocabulary. Distancing yourself from the emotional undercurrent will allow you to observe their conduct in an impartial manner, much like a scientist would while investigating a phenomenon. You are able to comprehend that their negativity is a product of their own internal landscape and not a reflection of you or your worth when you have the ability to detach yourself from the situation for a moment. Their behavior is not a reflection of your character, rather it is a symptom of themselves and the problems they are experiencing. Take for example the dark cloud. Although it may throw a shadow, it has nothing to do with the ground that it momentarily obscures it from view. The sky above still has the sun blazing brightly. Epictetus, a major Stoic philosopher, tells us that it is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. This highlights the need of focusing on your stoic path. The length of our lives is sufficient and a considerable quantity has been bestowed upon us for the most important reasons, provided that we are able to make the most of it correctly. If you want to avoid wasting your valuable time and energy, you should avoid getting involved with the negative energy of toxic people. Maintain your emotional distance, make it a priority to look after your own health, and keep moving forward on the stoic path that will lead you to a life filled with virtue and calm. It is not the same thing as apathy to be detached. While it is possible to show compassion for their troubles, it is not necessary for you to become a victim of the emotional storms that they are experiencing. You can protect your inner calm and emotional well-being by practicing stoic detachment, which requires you to change yourself from a passive target into a centered observer. It is important to keep in mind that the sun is still shining brilliantly above the mountains of clouds. Number 11. Don't try to fix them. The desire to mend, to heal, and to engage in the role of a therapist can be powerful, particularly when you are confronted with a person you care about who engages in behaviors that are harmful to others. On the other hand, in the sphere of Stoicism, this road frequently results in frustration and a depletion of one's own emotional reserves. 
When it comes to cultivating transformation, toxic individuals, like plants that are suffocated by weeds, require their own willpower and work. This transition cannot be compelled by any means. For the following reasons, Stoicism places a greater emphasis on concentrating on what you are able to control, which is your own reactions and interactions, rather than making an effort to change a toxic person. The onus of accountability. The onus of accountability for the actions of a toxic person is entirely on the individual himself or herself. It is necessary for them to make the deliberate decision to address their negative emotions and look for a way to achieve virtue. Trying to take on this responsibility for them will only result in an unhealthy dynamic and will hinder them from taking responsibility for the problems they are experiencing. One of the fundamental principles of Stoicism is the acceptance of things that are beyond one's ability to control. This includes things like the actions of other people, the circumstances of the outer world, and the ever-changing conditions of existence. The negativity that is exhibited by a poisonous person is a perfect example of this category. Because you have come to terms with this fact, you have liberated yourself from the fruitless effort to alter them, Imagine that your inner tranquility is a blooming garden. This is the focus of your stoic garden. The toxic people in your life, with their negative attitude, are like weeds that threaten to suffocate the growth that you have painstakingly cultivated. You are wasting your time and effort by attempting to uproot them in the garden of another person. Put your attention on things that are important to you, such as establishing positive connections, tending to your virtues, and engaging in self-care practices. The Stoic philosophy, on the other hand, places a high importance on assisting others in achieving virtue. There are, if you feel compelled, ways to encourage a toxic person to engage in self-reflection. However, it is important to keep in mind that you have limitations Instead of trying to dictate the path that they should take to change, you should offer materials that could potentially stimulate their own introspection than you would try to solve their problems. A book on good communication, a recommendation for a therapist, or even just a kind suggestion to evaluate the consequences of their actions could be included in this, depending on the circumstances. You can have the most significant influence on others by demonstrating stoic principles in your own life. This is the most effective way to lead by example. You have the ability to act as a silent beacon, a monument to the transformational power of stoic ideas through your calm attitude, measured responses and unwavering emphasis on virtue. Sometimes, despite your best attempts, a toxic person will continue to be entrenched in their negativity. It is important to know when to get away from them. In circumstances like these, Stoicism recommends establishing boundaries and, if necessary, withdrawing from the situation in order to safeguard one's own well-being. Keep in mind that you are unable to influence their trip but you have the ability to pick your own path. Through the process of internalizing these ideas, you will convert yourself from a frustrated fixer into a stoic facilitator. You are able to provide assistance without jeopardizing your own health, and you are able to develop an inner garden that may flourish in spite of the weeds that may be growing in other areas. Number 12. When to walk away. Imagine if you are looking for safety amid the tranquility of your stoic castle of refuge. You have developed your emotional detachment and you have planted a healthy inner garden. You have also strengthened your walls by establishing limits. Nevertheless, in spite of your best efforts, the negativity that comes from a toxic individual continues to remain, posing a threat to your defenses. 
The ability to recognize when it is appropriate to withdraw from a situation is a fundamental stoic precept. Making the decision to leave a toxic relationship, particularly one that involves close family members or co-workers, can be a decision that is extremely difficult to make. Prioritizing your mental health, on the other hand, is of the utmost importance. Stoics have a strong belief in the importance of leading a moral life and acting rationally. In direct opposition to these ideals is the practice of maintaining a relationship that undermines your sense of inner calm. This is why the Stoic philosophy is consistent with the practice of removing oneself from a harmful situation. Keeping your Stoic Sanctuary Safe your inner serenity is your sacred sanctuary, a place of refuge that you develop through self-care, mindfulness, and stoic practices. And someone that is poisonous, with their unrelenting negativity, is comparable to a persistent siege that is being laid on your fortress. It is possible to safeguard your emotional well-being and secure your sanctuary by removing yourself from the situation. Put your attention on what really matters. Seneca, a great Stoic philosopher, reminds us that life is a precious commodity by saying, the whole future lies in uncertainty. Live immediately. Live immediately. Continuing to be in a relationship that is unhealthy is a waste of this valuable time and energy. You give yourself the opportunity to invest in positive connections, meaningful pursuits, and experiences that nourish your spirit and contribute to a flourishing existence when you move away from whatever is holding you back. Accepting that which is out of our control is a key component of Stoicism, and other people's behaviors are a fantastic example of this. Moreover, Stoicism promotes detachment during this period. A decision to walk away from something does not indicate weakness or defeat. Rather, it indicates acceptance of a circumstance that you are unable to change and a deliberate choice to detach from negative emotions. You are not giving up on the individual. Rather, you are giving up on the poisonous dynamic that is detrimental to your body and mind. Moving on from a situation is not a choice that should be made flippantly. Take into consideration the following factors. Have you tried every other possible course of action? Do you have any experience with communication, establishing limits or providing resources? Is there a recurring pattern of negativity or is it a specific instance? Do you feel that the connection has a significant impact on your well-being? It's not necessary for there to be a dramatic scene as you walk away. The gradual withdrawal of contact, politely declining invites, or simply limiting communication are all techniques that have the potential to be beneficial. Keep in mind that removing yourself from a situation is a stoic act of protecting your inner calm and a type of self-care. You can live a life that is led by reason, virtue and peace if you make your well-being a priority. This will allow you to create room for positive relationships and experiences to develop. Number 13. Forgive yourself. Consider the following scenario. You are about to embark on a lengthy journey and you are carrying a hefty bag that is full of hatred and fury toward a poisonous individual. The weight of this responsibility slows you down, preventing you from making progress and draining your energy. Within the Stoic framework, forgiveness is defined as the process of releasing one's emotional baggage, not for the sake of the other person, but for one's own sake. The Stoics placed a strong emphasis on the significance of accepting things that are beyond our ability to control, with the actions of other people serving as a notable example. The act of harboring hate and resentment toward a person who creates a toxic environment falls clearly inside this category. 
Remaining steadfast in these unfavorable feelings will only cause you harm, contaminating your present and casting doubt on your future. Stoic principles equip you with the ability to forgive yourself and free yourself from the load of negativity in the following ways. Concentrate on your inner landscape. The Stoics held the belief that the actual source of power is the ability to govern one's own ideas and actions rather than the acts of others or the events that occur in the outside world. In order to recover control of your inner landscape and make room for serenity and emotional well-being, you must first forgive yourself and then let go of any animosity you may continue to harbor. Forgiveness, in the Stoic understanding, does not involve condoning the behavior of the poisonous person. Rather, it is about accepting the behavior of the toxic person. Acknowledging what has occurred, coming to terms with the fact that it is beyond your control, and making the decision to move forward with a lighter heart are all important steps. The famous Stoic Emperor Marcus Aurelius tells us that you have power over your mind. You do not have power over events that occur outside of yourself. Make this a reality and you will discover your strength. Your ability to forgive gives you the ability to reclaim this power. Finding a way to break the cycle of negativity. Resentment is a prison that one has created for oneself. If you continue to hold on to it, you are allowing the toxic person to continue to have a detrimental impact on your life, even though they are no longer there. A break in this cycle can be achieved by forgiving yourself, which will release you from the emotional shackles of the past. The process of forgiving oneself does not take place overnight. In order to foster forgiveness, here are some ways to do so. Recognize your feelings. The first thing you need to do is recognize the feelings of anger, hurt or resentment that you are experiencing. When these feelings are repressed, it just serves to slow down the healing process. Practicing self-compassion entails treating oneself with the same empathy and consideration that you would provide to a friend experiencing a same situation. Not only are you a victim of their negativity, but you are also a victim of their behavior. Make an effort to evaluate the event in an objective manner by shifting your perspective. Was the toxic individual acting maliciously or were there other things at play that contributed to the situation? Transforming your point of view can help cultivate empathy and understanding, which in turn can pave the road for forgiveness. A gift is something that you offer to yourself and forgiveness is a gift. You may make room for emotional healing, progress, and a life that is more rewarding by letting go of the burden of negativity. Imagine that you are going on your journey, your backpack lighter and your heart lighter, and that you are prepared to accept the adventures that are still to come with a renewed sense of strength and tranquility. You have the ability to convert yourself from a passive victim of toxic people into a resilient warrior of your inner peace by applying these 13 methods that are inspired by stoic philosophical thought. Keep in mind that a life that is devoid of negativity is a life that is worth fighting for.